Hello, today I am taking a look at some old One Piece models I made years ago, starting with the one I actually showed on my channel, Admiral Akainu. I'll be upfront, this model is shit and I don't like it. There's a reason you don't see him standing on my shelves and it's because he doesn't actually stand uh, at all, really. You see, I started making these guys in 2014, so before the Darth Vader model. Uh, and you can really tell it's old because it doesn't hold up. You can't pick up any of these guys without parts falling out or flopping all over the place, which isn't fun to handle and was a big problem I faced for a long time. And if they didn't stand up, then they were all failures in my mind. It didn't matter how cool they looked or what gimmicks they had if they couldn't hold a pose for two seconds. But rather than dwell on what doesn't work, I'm here to talk about what does or did, because none of it works anymore. To take a quick look at what ideas and techniques I had back then that influenced my work to become what you've seen it as today. Because everything I've made in the past, especially my failures, has been key to the to the progress I've made in my artwork. Like, look at Akainu's hip joints here. It's this weird fixed T-shaped peg that extends down from the upper body, which means the thigh joints have to slide around that. And because it's so short, it just made it too easy for the legs to fall off. This was a terrible idea, but I didn't know that for sure until I had tried. Uh, I also just made the joints way too small back then, which is a big factor as to why they're so loose and they don't really stand up well. You really do want to make the joints as big as possible for the for the part that the joint is going to be moving. Akainu, who is 32 centimeters tall by the way, did not have big enough joints. His hip joints were the same size as Goku, for example, and his elbow was basically the same size as Joker both of which are like half his size. So this was never gonna work. And it also meant that he wouldn't have a waist joint either. Uh, but other than that, the joints were pretty much made the same as I do today, just less structurally sound, of course. Looking at the rest of him here, there's nothing too innovative or complex in the shape, but I do appreciate the simplicity. The torso is basically a big wide box with the limbs being long, slim cylinders, and that works well for his character. It conveys the basic shape of his build. Um, with the detail and the drawing on the neck and face area being really quite good, I do like it, and the proportions work well too. The sculpting on his chest is really solid, and um, yeah, I do like it. Of course, he does have this simple flat face that I did for so long, which I do think is a pretty effective way to make a face simple and quickly. I still like that too. Um, fundamentally, I do think this looks all right. It's very recognizable as the character and a passable 3D drawing. The issue is just the build quality. Everything's loose, falls out, and isn't very satisfying to fiddle with, particularly the coat. So he's in the same pile as Vader. Cool, but needs an update. However, I have glossed over the biggest feature of the model, the magma arms. In both of his forearms, he has the same gimmick as Superman's laser, only this time it's colored to look like uh, magma. It's a lot of paper coiled around into a tube. So when you pull at the end, it actually extends out looking like he's shooting lava from his arm. A technique I have been using for over a decade to build in gimmicks that portray a character's powers. In fact, it was One Piece characters like Ace and Smoker that inspired me to make my own toys out of paper in the first place over 13 years ago, so I could incorporate a technique just like this one to, to represent their powers. Because the action figures weren't doing that, so if the little 11 year old me wanted it, I had to do it myself. And on his right arm, I actually made these big layered magma fists. You see this one on the outside looks pretty cool where it's basically just a cube drawn like a fist with some rounded edges and then three fire pieces of paper. Three pieces of paper just drawn and cut out to look like fire. Um, but then inside that uh, it's actually layered like so it comes out and then you have a smaller magma fist that's drawn in a different style and then inside that one you have an even smaller magma fist that's drawn in another style and then around that you have his actual hand. And I think the idea behind these removing like this was so I could have them like shoot off like it was some kind of meteor shower. But the best part is this, the smoke part. This is perfect. Like this is such a great idea and it's simple. It's just three layers of smoke attached by two joints here so it can rotate out like this. And then you can actually have it flowing that way too, which was how I achieved that opening animation in my Akainu video, which you should check out. I think that's a really cool animation and it just, it really looks like there's a lot of fire going on. And this, this part was just genius. I can't believe I thought of this. And then the way it wraps around his forearm here and then it kind of compacts and extends and articulates. I could use this piece today exactly the way it is now. And it hasn't even broken or anything over time. It's just really, really cool way to convey smoke. Oh, and if you see that animation, you'll see that there's like little pieces of fire flicking up from it. And that's just, I actually had like drew 
flat pieces of fire, separate pieces that I would like have to extend upwards as I was animating it. So everything is a practical effects to, to portray his fire. And the final thing I wish to go over is the height. Akainu is roughly 32 centimeters, really freaking tall. Dofi is about 33, which makes them both taller than Thanos and shorter than Katakuri. So these other models suffer from a lot of the same issues as Akainu since I was making all of them around the same time. This Kizuru here is just a mess with even worse hip joints than Akainu. I don't know how I thought this would work. But something I do want to talk about here are the gimmicks and effects that I used to frequently incorporate with these One Piece models. Like Kizuru here has a sword he can make out of light, so this part was meant to be that extending. And that was going to store in- oh that's right! I used to also make characters with back doors to store their effects. <laughs> In the spirit of making toys that didn't need all these separate accessories that you had to keep track of, I tried to make my, my models so they could actually store their accessories somehow. And yep, there it is. Can he actually store his fire effect parts in there? That's... This is just, uh, perfect. <laughs> I can't believe I did this. Like Frankie's mini fridge in his stomach. Oh, the things I come up with. So here's an abandoned Aokiji that, yep, he has a back door too. Although I suppose everybody does, don't they? And also he has the same kind of extendy part in his forearm, just like Akainu for his, uh, his ice. And Crocodile has one for his sand too. He also had this clever part here that was meant to portray his like cutting sand ability. So it'd extend out like do, 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 then go. The one I want to take a minute to look at here, because he has some shit going on, is the heavenly demon Don Quixote do Flamingo. I threw every single gimmick and idea into this model. First and foremost, he has the fully articulated fingers that, uh, and was actually the first model to incorporate this feature, and I've been doing it the same way ever since, so that started here with Dofi. Pretty cool face sculpt here with the tongue hanging out and removable glasses, I believe. Oh, so he has this big feather coat and this has a lot going on. Now, I really like when characters have a big overcoat draping over their shoulders like Darth Vader and Crocodile, but that can be a big problem to make a model or toy out of when you wanna have, uh, you know, their arms move. So I added some joints in a pretty neat way that allows this part to rotate and move so his shoulders can groove. Oh, and his shirt has some movement too. This upper part lifts up and back on this double joint and you can see some of the inner workings of how these joints come to come to move the way they do. However, it doesn't end there. This moves up and out of the way because this lower section folds down on these other two double joints to reveal this ammo clip of interchangeable faces that are stored here on the back. And at the bottom we do have his little pistol too, because he seems to always pull it out of thin air. These were the lengths that I went to to ensure that every accessory I made for a character could be stored on the model. I love this so much. This is the model I want to remake the most just to do this feature properly. Oh, and he has like a little kickstand to support his weight, which was some incredible freaking foresight because God did he need it. And this white beard was just here to show you how ridiculous I used to be when making the joints. For years, this was how I was doing things, just randomly sticking parts together until it felt solid. A far cry from the very refined and streamlined frames and joints that I do today. In conclusion, all of these models are old, outdated failures in the same pile as Darth Vader. And that's really cool. It's cool to see how far things have come and how the ideas that I use today were already being implemented first over four years ago. I mean, Akainu's smoke effect is totally something I do exactly the same way today. Blackbeard's face was the first time I'd ever done a three-dimensional face with a proper nose and eye sockets laying the groundwork for how I make faces today, such as Thanos and Joker, which I think are exceptional. And Do Flamingo was the very first character to have fully articulated fingers. And the way I made his hand back then is exactly the same way I still make their hands today. That's incredible. So these models are really valuable 
pieces of, of art and a reminder of where and why I began and probably more precious to me than my successes. I thought in a different way when I made these and I wouldn't actually be able to recreate them now because I'm, I'm a different person now and I don't think that way anymore. And uh, that's pretty cool. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you enjoyed this brief retrospective on the models I made from the single biggest influence on my artwork, One Piece. So comment below your thoughts. Oh, and speaking of comments, I'm bringing back an old segment that I used to do called Comment of the Week, only now I'm adding Question of the Week too. I really appreciated and enjoyed reading all the comments in my previous few videos, and so I wanna, I wanna show that here by addressing them directly. So yes, I used to actually make Luffy's arms stretch by using the same technique for Superman's heat vision, uh, incorporated the exact same way as Akainu's magma arm that you saw in this video. And a shout out to this comment from Ben Martin for just making me laugh. Uh, and here's some others that I liked too. Okay, that's it. You'll see me next time. Bye-bye.